Hello and welcome to Pseudocode. Now that you have clicked on the very catchy title of Can Computers Bully Each Other or Not? Let me tell you this video is going to be about distributed systems and how leader election takes place in distributed systems. For past 2-3 videos, we have been talking about distributed systems, introduction, Kafka, etc. In this video, we will understand what are leaders in a distributed system, why leader election is required in a distributed system, and also what are the different leader election algorithms with a focus on particularly one algorithm which is also known as bully algorithm. So without further ado, let's get started. In order to understand what a leader is, we will take example of a single leader setup from our previous videos where we just talked about a key value store where there are certain nodes and only one of the nodes act as leader. In distributed systems, a leader is typically defined as a node or a process that is responsible for coordinating certain tasks and managing state across different nodes within the system to ensure consistency, availability and reliability of the system. The leader is a central authority for making key decisions coordinating certain operations and managing the order of events and operations across the distributed network. Now that we understand what leader is supposed to do, we need to understand how leaders are elected in a system. Whether it is a system of 5 or 7 nodes or whether it is a complicated system which have thousands of nodes which can have multiple leaders, we need to understand how the system agrees on selecting a particular leader. You must have heard about various algorithms for leader election like Paxos and Raft. Bully algorithm is also one of the fundamental algorithms for leader election. And in today's video, we are going to focus on that one. This is the simplest algorithm. And also, as the name suggests, a computer basically bullies its way to become a leader in a distributed system. Just like a bully is someone who has some extra power, like they can be physically stronger or something. Similarly, a computer can show off its power by showing that they have highest ID and they practically try to become a leader just on that basis. A computer with the highest node becomes a leader in the system. That is the core of bully algorithm. But I wish it could have been as simple as that. So now let's dig into the details of the algorithm. Let's consider a distributed system of five nodes with different IDs assigned to every node, 42 being the highest ID assigned. So when the system is initialized, the node with ID 42 becomes the leader of the system by default. Since it is the leader's responsibility to coordinate all the tasks and manage state across different nodes and also keep the information about the nodes in the system, a leader continuously sends heartbeat messages to all the other nodes in the system. Heartbeat messages are nothing but just it can be an API call to a slash health API or it can be a way of sending some events marking that they are heartbeat events, those can be messages or so and the leader sends over these heartbeat messages over certain period of time repeatedly to all the nodes. Maybe it is sending that heartbeat every 30 seconds or every 45 seconds or so on. This time interval is kept short enough but also it cannot be kept long like two minutes or so. It depends on how high availability of the system you would want but typically 30 to 40 seconds or 60 seconds is the time interval that is kept in order for leader to send these heartbeat messages. Now till the time the system is functioning well and the leader is sending these heartbeat messages and the system is performing its operation efficiently all is fine now let's say that the leader itself gets down for some reason or there is some fault in the leader node and it stops sending those heartbeat messages what would happen in that case is that all the other nodes in the system who are expecting the leader to send those heartbeat messages will start noticing that i'm not getting the heartbeat from my leader anymore in this case what happens is the node whoever first realizes that I have stopped getting the heartbeat messages from my leader, they will start an election. They will say that, okay, I'm not getting the heartbeat messages. That means something is wrong with the leader. And now the system needs a new leader. So I'm going to start an election by telling everybody that I am the new leader. The criteria for any node to know that they have stopped receiving the heartbeat messages and they are supposed to start an election is also based on certain timeouts. So let's say that the leader was sending heartbeat messages every 30 seconds. If a node in the system who is not a leader has not received any heartbeat, let's say for one minute or one and a half minute, that means they have missed three heartbeats. That might be considered as a criteria for them to start a new election. So in this case, Let's say the node 36 realizes that I have stopped getting the heartbeat from the server. So I'm going to start a new election and I'm going to tell everybody that I am the new leader. But since the criteria for bully algorithm is that the node with the higher ID or the highest ID among the alive nodes will become the leader, right? So what would happen is that every node 
will check that what are the other nodes in the system who have higher IDs than me and it will tell those other higher ID nodes that I want to be the leader. But how does the node with ID 36 knows that what are the other nodes in the system which have higher ID? So what happens is all the nodes in the system store certain information with them when the system gets initialized. They store the information that who is the current leader. They store the information of what are the other nodes in the system. They store the IDs of other nodes in the system. So when node 36 realizes that they have stopped getting heartbeat from the server, they will find out all the other nodes in the system who have higher ID than 36 and it will send a message only to those nodes with higher IDs that I want to be a leader. In this case, node with ID 38 and 40 are the nodes with higher IDs. So 36 is going to send two messages to 38 and 40 that I want to be the leader. Why it wouldn't send the message to 42? Because it was the leader itself and it has not sent any heartbeat for some time. Depending on the implementation of the algorithm, it might send a message to 42 as well, assuming that it might come back after some time. So that depends on the implementation details. Now, once node 38 and 40 receive the message from node 36, when they receive this message that there is a certain node who has started the election, the logic that they have to check is the message that they have received from the node. What is the ID of that node? If the ID of that node is lower than the ID of the node which has received the message. So for example, 40 will realize that node 36 has sent a message. 38 will realize that node 36 had sent a message. So both of them have the right to say, no, you cannot be the leader because you have lesser ID than mine. So node 40 and node 38 both will respond to node 36 saying, no, you cannot be the leader. Once 36 receives this message from any one of the node, I either 38 or 40 that they have said that you cannot be a leader, it will say, okay, fine. You have higher ID than me, so I'm going to drop out of the election. Now, once node 36 drops out of the election, whichever node has stopped it, let's say node 40 has said that you have lower ID than me, so you cannot be the leader. That particular node will restart the election by sending the messages to nodes which have higher ID than 40. In this case, no other node has higher ID than the node which has the ID 40. So node 40 will declare itself leader. In case node 38 would have sent a message to 36 saying that you cannot be the leader because I have higher ID than you. In that case also 36 would have dropped then node 38 will again start election and will send messages to node 40. Node 40 will again say no you cannot be the leader because I have higher ID than you and again node 40 will become the leader of the system. So basically the whole algorithm works in a way that only the node with the higher ID will become the next new leader. In all this scenario if node 42 comes back and it rejoins the election then even node 40 would have to give up because node 42 will say that no you cannot be the leader because I have higher ID than you. Here is a flowchart to understand the whole algorithm, which is basically again the same that if all the nodes are receive, receiving the heartbeats from the leader, everything goes fine. As soon as a node realizes that it has missed a certain heartbeats, it starts the election. It sends messages to the nodes which have higher IDs. If any of the nodes with higher IDs respond that I am available, you cannot be the leader, it drops out of the election. The new node with the higher ID again restarts the election by sending messages to other nodes who have higher IDs than them. And then eventually the node with the highest ID ID ends up becoming the leader. This is the crux and core of the bully algorithm. Leader election is not as simple as it sounds. When you will try and understand the code that I have linked in the description for bully algorithm, you will realize that how complicated it is. There are so many corner cases to handle. There are so many processes to handle. There are also retries in between in order to make sure that the messages are passed through properly. When a leader election is happening, the network partitioning also has to be considered as a factor that what happens when a leader election is going on and there is network partitioning and some of the nodes have dropped out of the system and so many other corner cases like this. Other than that, this is just one of the leader election algorithms. The more complicated algorithms which actually work for very large distributed systems are Paxos and Raft. Do let me know in comments if you want me to create a video on any one of those algorithms or both of them and then I will proceed and do that. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions related to bully algorithm itself, please feel free to share them as well uh, in comments. There are some resources linked in the description. You can check them out. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.